In this video, we'll look at how to set up an integral in polar coordinates. Before we begin, why don't we just briefly discuss how we do things in rectangular coordinates first. Here I have the double integral of some function over a region, and you should think of that dA in the integral as representing a small element of area in the region. So I'm thinking of that dA as that little patch of area that I've uh, drawn as a little rectangular piece of the region R. So that's dA. And you might think of that region, or that little piece coming from a change in x times a little change in y. And so, roughly speaking, we think of dA as being the product of dx and dy. And in rectangular coordinates, then, we would then do an iterated integral first with respect to x, and then with respect to y, and the limits of integration set up accordingly. If you prefer, you could do it in the opposite order, and then make the corresponding adjustments to the limits of integration. If I want to integrate in polar coordinates, however, I need to think about not a change in x and a change in y, but I should first think about a change in the angle, which I'm representing there with uh, delta theta, and that's a small change in the angle. And then a corresponding change in the radius, which I've represented with delta r here. And what we get is not a rectangular patch, but a little slice of the circular sector uh, of area that we're seeing here. And so let's call that delta A now. And so to find the area roughly, and because these are all very small, uh, roughly it should be delta R on one side. And it'd be wrong to think it's just delta theta there because theta is the angle. I should scale that according to my radial distance to get roughly the length of that other side. And so what I need to do is to take R times delta theta. Notice the reason for that factor of r there is because if I move the radius further out, as I increase the radius, that area gets bigger, so we should expect this to scale with the radius r. And so you really need to do a more precise argument for this that you should see in your calculus class, but what you should be thinking here is that delta a is giving a dA that corresponds to r, dr, and then d theta. So when we integrate in polar coordinates, we'll integrate with respect to theta, with respect to r, but we also incur this factor of r as well in the expression uh, that comes from this scaling factor that we saw below when we calculated areas. You then need to set up your limits of integration. Theta will range through some range of angles. And then the inner limits, if we're doing it in this order, will range uh, between potentially some functions of r that deter or of theta rather that determine the uh, radius of the region that we're integrating through.